Have you ever considered piracy? You'd make an amazing Dread Pirate Roberts. All right, this one's going to kind of be for fun. Several years ago, Windless put out a reproduction of Wesley's Dread Pirate Robert sword from The Princess Bride. And yes, uh, my kids and I are fans of the movie. Now, it's long since gone off production and has become a collectible. However, uh, on Amazon, something that kept popping up in my searches was a windless product that they called the Black Marauder Rapier, which is basically the same sword. However, the blade and the guard have been blackened. Another thing they did was they swapped out the pommel. I'll try to uh, post a picture of the original sword if I can find one. Had a shorter but wider, almost more disc-like pommel. I think this one actually fits the, the overall aesthetic of the sword a lot more, so I like it, but not quite authentic to the stage piece. The rest of it is, though. Black Marauder Rapier. Yeah, it's, it's not quite a rapier. It's, it's not quite a... Well, I'm having trouble classifying it. Let me just say it's, it's interesting. So let's take a look at it. I know it's going to be hard to do so, given that I'm showing you something black on black here. But All right, so first of all, the blackening on the blade is quite nice. It looks like some sort of almost deep bluing. It's not just a chemical surface coating, as far as I can tell. It's a diamond cross section. No edges came from the factory, but that's kind of a windless thing. Let me add those later. It's a 1065 carbon steel. I think it's threaded construction. The guard, which is, is reasonably solid, I believe is made out of a, a kind of stainless steel. The grip is wrapped in, well, probably fake leather. But yeah, there's certain things about this that are, well, let's say intriguing. First of all, blade length, 32 and a half inches, so not rapier length, yet it's not really a small sword and it's not really a side sword. It certainly seems like it would take a couple of good edges, or at least functional edges. I'll let you know when I finally get around to doing that. But yeah, this seems to be a little bit more balanced between cut and thrust. Now, one thing the reviewers had mentioned negatively was that the sword didn't have a lot of distal taper or profile taper. And yeah, you can kind of see it, it does look a little parallel in its edges. However, it does have some. It has some distal taper and some profile taper. Starts out a little thicker down here, ends up a little thinner down here. But one of the things you'll notice when I flex it, it does have a little bit of flex, not, not a hideous amount of flex. It does bend more evenly through the middle than towards the tip. Okay. Weight. One pound, 14 and a half ounces. So not very heavy. But point of balance, three and a half inches off the guard, which isn't bad. Makes it handle very well, but it's, it doesn't handle like a strictly thrust-centric sword for me. A couple of other odd things about it. The, um, the quillins are different lengths. And visually, that kind of puts me off, where the one in front of the D-guard is a little shorter than the one on the back edge. Also, it, it has side rings, but it doesn't have any finger rings. So if you put your finger up here north of the quillins, it's, it's kind of in danger. Now, who knows? I might, I might add some myself. So this could be a sword I leave as is, or it could be a sword I turn into, well, who knows what. I guess we'll see how it performs over time. Speaking of which, let's take a look at the, um, the rest of it, the scabbard. Scabbard is very basic. It is uh, leather lined, I believe, with plastic, so it's, it's not reinforced. It's flexible. However, it does have a blackened metal throat with this little kind of stud hook for hanger, frog, whatever. And then it's got, I would almost say again, a disproportionately large shape on the end of it. It, it kind of makes the end of the, the scabbard very unusually weighty. However, it does have a really kind of cute little, see if you can see it, skull and crossbones motif. Because we're, we're going with the pirate theme here. Speaking of the pirate theme, one of the reasons, as I mentioned, that I got the sword is my 
my daughter saw it and she was intrigued by it so I have a I have a feeling that uh, I'm not going to have it in my possession very long <laughs> I think it will get pirated from me pretty quickly but you know old Dread Pirate Roberts thing it is passed on it's not just one person behind the mask anyway just want to do a quick review because I haven't seen a lot of reviews out there on this sword. I, I got it from Amazon. Like I said, it was about 160 bucks. Not very expensive. It's it's intriguing. It's a nice piece of cinematic fandom history, and it, it's got potential to be something. I just don't quite know what yet. So this will probably be one of those to be continued videos. But until that time, I hope. You found this interesting, entertaining, informative, and as usual, I hope to see you again.